All right, everyone. Uh, looks like we're going to jump in here um, with uh, Character Creator 3. Um, and now on this process of creating our cyberpunk character, I started with one of the initial um, pre sets of one of our characters inside of character creator and did a just a very quick pose which allowed me to just find a little bit of gesture in my character which is a great way to uh you know find just that little extra flair that i don't have to create right out of the gate so this gave me an opportunity to just establish um some initial anatomy made a few uh tweaks and then uh you know lit it quickly did a quick render and then got it into Photoshop to start doing some initial uh, draw over. So here, just establishing uh, quickly, just some block outs of the costume over, uh, you know, what I consider that initial buck or kind of treating this almost like a paper doll where giving us the opportunity to just explore some different shapes over top of this uh, yeah, basically this anatomy of this character here without having to do much guesswork when we jump into it. And on any sort of project like this, as much planning as I can do in the beginning helps in the long run. So once I jump into uh, 3D and start creating, you know, clothing and other bits of costuming and assets for this character, um, it eliminates the guesswork. So I really don't need to worry about any of that. Um, at that stage, I'm just free to sort of work into those uh, designs that have already been approved by the client at a sketch phase. So here I'm just quickly kind of blocking out some of the uh, secondary forms of this costume, uh, getting some of those iconic sort of cyberpunk uh, design uh, elements into this costume, playing up some elements of asymmetry in this design, and really thinking about the elements of character creator that I'm going to want to spotlight. Um, with this being a relatively new workflow for myself, um, you know, I was really excited to see where I could push my designs um, in not only maybe an easier fashion, but maybe more of an efficient fashion than I could do in the past. And, uh, you know, a lot of it is, you know, what I'm preemptively thinking about is is, uh, are, are the, uh, or excuse me, is the ability to, um, you know, have the, essentially this base character to work on and then pose very quickly inside a character creator, which, uh, you know, anyone experienced with the 3D platform short of, you know, rigging your own character, it's a bit challenging once you have all those elements on your character, especially just for concept. Um, so this was a really interesting sort of challenge uh, to really kind of hone in on potentially this brand new workflow um, that, you know, uh, that I hadn't really utilized before or seen other artists uh, utilize for concept um, rather than, you know, asset creation for games or films. So in this case, you know, we're really going to stick right uh, in Character Creator 3. Um, no, I clone seven at this stage, but it was definitely a part of the process that I experimented with to uh, work on some future projects, we'll, which will definitely be coming here shortly. I've already have some ideas in mind uh, for things that I would like to, uh, you know, push further utilizing Character Creator 3 and a lot of the uh, the new features that have been included uh, or that Real Illusion has developed for this workflow, which I'm really excited by. So here, uh, yeah, just going to continue to kind of hone in on this design and then finish up this part of the process and essentially call this, um, this piece done. I just want to get a very quick block out of these forms and see, you know, the way this is working on this particular concept, uh, which is great is this is a really non-committal part of the process where I can just sort of put down lines and, and see what's working or what's not. But I, like I mentioned before, I have all of these proportions in place. So there really won't be much guesswork when it comes time to, uh, to actually get this in 3d and create assets that I can then bring into character creator to, you know, apply to my character. And I'm really excited to show you guys, uh, that as, we move along through the rest of these videos.
Here I'm just going to uh, block out the underlying values, get that silhouette fully refined in here. And you can see nothing, uh, nothing fancy about the process at this stage, just quickly blocking it in with a very simple uh, brush inside of Photoshop. As this isn't a digital painting um, demo per se, I wanted to keep this process as simple as possible to show that this, this whole technique is really based around the idea of ideation and um, the ability to quickly use the tools at our disposal to uh, you know work smarter rather than work harder with this stuff so uh, here I'm just going to quickly move through this and try and get some value break up uh, within the design so you can see I'm kind of limiting it to a couple of basic uh, core values basically a one two three system of a sort of dark light and um, you know uh, lighter or darker gray to keep things a bit more simple. So at this stage, I'm just thinking about the way that the costume will have break up or get that quick visual read here. So as you can see, I'm just moving through the breastplate and breaking that up as a lighter value. Um, and then as well on that one asymmetrical shoulder pad, a pauldron and a uh, wrist gauntlet. So you can see there are elements that are symmetrical throughout the costume and then elements that are asymmetrical, like that uh, sort of bandolier, uh, excuse me, that, uh, say that mid-waist sash across the lower torso and, um, uh, of course, the shoulder pauldron and elements of the rest of the design here. So uh, I was working on top of an opacity layer. Um, so I'm just kind of turning that off. I'd also just worked on the piece monochromatically. So the color from the initial render is still there because at a certain point, yes, I'm absolutely going to be um, just applying some quick color for the client to take a look at and give their approval on. Um, but this is a just a really easy way to go in, get quick results with the work that doesn't uh, uh, really doesn't cause many headaches at this stage which is great because um, as much as we'd like to create a really beautiful piece and ultimately that is what the goal is of these these concepts and at the end just to get a really nice looking illustration or design um, it's it's not everything it's about communicating the idea of this costume of this character and how those elements correspond with one another so uh yeah so just trying to give it a little bit of form here so we don't have as graphic of a read just working in tandem with uh, you know, some of the lighting that's in place, but this is all still pretty gestural. Um, nothing, nothing too exaggerated, nothing too crazy. We just want to make sure that whatever we're del delivering to the client um, obviously conveys, uh, you know, what our intention for the design is. Uh, what I like about this sketch phase is it is non-committal. I don't feel like I'm taking a huge chunk of time to deliver work. So, uh, you know, it uh, allows us to just get ideas out so that if something doesn't work, it doesn't feel like I've burned a huge chunk of time uh, trying to get something out to a client uh, that uh, potentially isn't what they're looking for. So you know, just kind of some icing on top. Now we have turned the color back on, and I am still keeping things monochromatic for the most part. I'm really only going to let the client look at the breakup and there you see uh, some features that i tend to play with inside of character creator the ability to make things emissive or make them glow so uh just going through there to finish that one up and then moving into uh, a second illustration here you can see basically the same premise um the same workflow so just moving through trying to find opportunities where i can push and pull the silhouette um this one's a little bit uh uh more heavily inspired by works of like say a mobius or a ron cobb um you know and work on f films like say blade runner or alien uh so that kind of retro sci-fi aesthetic um to the costume here blending it with elements that are cyberpunk like the big visor and uh some of those uh you know shoulder pauldrons and, and wrist gauntlets and things like that so you can see that we've moved through the line pretty quick and i'm just kind of getting some additional value breakup here we're moving a little bit further ahead in the process uh on another iteration uh, i'm just trying to block out some of the core values to um, help just kind of sell a little bit more of the form here and then jumping a little bit further ahead on um, on this uh, uh, 
additional design. This is one where we're just kind of spotlighting um, a piece of uh, that I've taken a little bit further ahead, um, keeping it still within the sketch arena, but uh, making some more uh, painterly choices in there and um, painting on top of some of the uh, more sketchy forms that I've put in place. And you can see here that I have uh, turned the color back on to that initial render pass out of character creator here. Um, and also uh, just playing around with some of the features that I'm going to uh, tweak inside of character creator. Now, thanks to the um, uh, different editors that are in character creator three now, which are really phenomenal. Um, so part of, uh, part of this workflow was a challenge to myself to introduce some things that I felt would be, um, best handled by character creator. And, and, um, and it was, uh, it was a really fantastic opportunity to play around with those new features and introduce them into, uh, you know, what will be my workflow going forward. So, here I'm just playing around with some lighting features, trying to get those very, you know, cybernetic or cyberpunk inspired cut lines into the surface of her skin. Obviously the shift, the, the blue hue shift of her skin. Uh, we still have some rosy elements, some areas where it feels like there might be, you know, um, heat close to the surface, but wanted it to feel something, you know, less than human, something more cyborg or cybernetic inspired. Um, so you can see, just pop the visor up. I'm hitting a few of the light sources there, just kind of indicating where are the you know called the glowy bits that's the scientific term glowy bits so just trying to get them in place and then uh, jumping into color here so um, this was a rather quick process uh, you'll see that it was very easy with the values already established in the existing sketches to kind of go in and refine these further so the sketch here was um, based on a second round of revisions from the client where we started to kind of piecemeal some of the previous design elements together to ultimately land on the final design choice. So there's some bits uh, and bobs from different incarnations of the first wave of sketches that ultimately led us to this version. So the shoulder pauldrons, these big sort of plated pieces with the cylindrical forms extruding from the surface, those were from one piece where, you know, the legs might be from another, the sash from one, the visor from another. Um, so that's what's great about that sketch process is it really gives us the freedom to, uh, you know, to make uh, choices uh, where need be. So just going to continue to kind of work through here and start to get some color break up in a very similar fashion as to the way I handled uh, the values. I'm going to handle the colors in the same way, meaning I'm going to keep a very limited color palette on, uh, on these concept uh, iterations. You don't want to overload the client the same way. You don't want to, you know, wide value range. I don't want to hit this piece with a million different colors. So I'm keeping a very uh, unified color scheme on this piece and using things like the hue saturation slider within inside of Photoshop to just quickly kind of, you know, slide through some variations to see what's working. So here um, you can see like in tandem with the sort of blue comma or blue uh, sash or wrap around the waist there, I'm looking at what will work as a gold combination or a good combination with the kind of gold armor and some of these, you know, maybe blue uh, patterns on that armor. So as a result of uh, these different breakups here, uh, ultimately I'm going to see how these elements play together um, and as well see what works thematically uh, with the sort of intended purpose uh, of the piece. I imagine, you know, as most cyberpunk uh, scenes go, it's kind of a dark, moody, uh, futuristic city. So here I am just kind of uh, trying to play around with some different options, desaturating the color, playing with some kind of army fatigue greens there. Um, and lastly, after I've kind of settled on this sort of teal and red combination that ultimately becomes um, uh, the sort of driving direction for the piece as a whole. Um, I go through with just this sort of third um, cool gray into the piece as that sort of third breakup that is going to equal uh, some of the undersuit as well as the um, sort of uh, biomechanical uh, arm 
here, the sort of android arm, cybernetic arm here. Um, and as well, I'm using some of the red from the costume and pulling that into the arm Just, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what to do. So as well as trying to figure out the combination here, I'm just as trying to figure out the internal breakup uh, uh, along the costume and along some of these cut lines here uh, to not only balance out uh, the value breakup, but also think about the way that the uh, color breakup happens within the design. Um, so making sure that certain areas don't get too busy or too crowded. Um, really trying to think about the costume as a whole. So here I'm just uh, using hue saturation once again to play around with those adjustments. And I went from the sort of uh, gold purple combination to more of that blue red. And now I'm playing around with some desaturation, which is giving me sort of this uh, militaristic look, uh, but ultimately decided to keep the saturation because I kind of like the combination of the cyberpunk uh, elements fused with, you know, maybe a little bit more of this colorful, uh, bombastic quality that uh, these bright colors have on the design. And I think it'll be a neat combination when it's set against this kind of gritty backdrop that I'm aiming for in the final piece. Um, also playing with the cybernetic arm here and pulling some of those reds from the armor into it to help uh, get some breakup along that armor to obviously unify the color choices, but also to uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, allude to the internal physiology of, uh, you know, the, the human musculature. So some of that red looks like muscle tissue. And as well, just kind of coming through and brightening up that sort of skirt or sash around her waist. Um, I'm going to play around with some translucent elements inside of character creator when we jump in there and play around with some material options. And I thought it'd be really cool to have kind of this rain slick material um, for her sash rather than something uh, like an opaque element like the rest of her costume. Uh, as well, just kind of going through, playing around with lighting up some of these elements, getting some additional breakup, uh, really boosting uh, the read on some of those armor elements that will really help distinguish uh, the metallic read of this armor. So as these sketches come to a close, I'm just experimenting with a few textural details on some of the material breakups here, trying to even distinguish further between what is, you know, what are the metallic surfaces and what are some of the maybe softer fabric reads within the design, as well as playing with maybe some um, textural details along that skirt. Uh, so as this wraps up here, uh, we are going to take one last look at the final concepts that were completed before moving into 3D. So here we have the initial grayscale sketches that were combined together to create these three color concepts and ultimately settling on this blue and red combination that will be the driving concept for our design.